Hello my soccer universe! The Women's World Cup group stage is in the books and I decided I'll take the time to kind of recap a little bit what was happening. In case you've missed it, I've posted on my channel on a daily basis my quick findings and my quick thoughts on the entire thing. The group stage overall has been kind of a slow build. Uh, I think it started relatively uh, meh with lots of 1-0 results and nothing really happening. Then in the second round, I think it really kicked into the next gear with Australia losing to Nigeria at home and then the great France against Brazil match up. But going into the last uh, matches, you know, we saw, yes, the field got a lot tighter. We saw potential upsets coming. I mean, for me, almost the biggest story was kind of, what is Norway? Is Norway really in that much trouble? Uh, and potentially the Italian women might not make it. And then at the very end, uh, yeah, the Italian women did not make it expectedly. But no, it was not a story at all, although it should be in a way, because that's a nation that is a, main, a powerhouse in the women's game. But it's kind of nowhere uh, uh, at this point in time. But what we got on the last set of group games, I mean, we have now. The Olympic champions out. We got Spain absolutely humiliated by a Japan team that looks like the real deal. Uh, we have China, the um, Asian champions are out as well. Um, but you know, China have been out. We almost had the US and it really, really kicked, kicked into the neck next year in the last few. The US almost got eliminated. Almost got eliminated by Portugal. Uh, we had Brazil going out. We had Italy going out and then to top it all off and it was already um, a big surprise that they lost to Colombia. Germany are eliminated. And arguably the three biggest nations on the men's side are out of the women's game. The US almost joined them. So uh, really, really, really big stuff uh, just on that scale. Um, to me, the moment of the... Um, Group stage was definitely Linda Casado's goal against Germany. What a brilliant goal that was. And yeah, I'm fully on board with Colombia at this moment, although they kind of disappointed me against uh, Morocco. Fortunately, I didn't see much of the game. But uh, it also has to be said that we have quite some, um, you know, no, there, there are, there are some the field is relatively open uh, with only half the teams coming from Europe. Then we have two from CONCACAF, which was expected, but it was not Jamaica that was expected. We have three from uh, Africa, which is unheard of. I think they never even had more than one. Uh, then uh, we have one from South America, of course, and we have, I think, two from Asia with Japan and also Australia, who might actually be forces to be reckoned with. So Overall, this tournament has to me the feel of what 2002 was on the men's side. A tournament full of surprises, you know, in an uncomfortable um, environment for the big nations. Because uh, and then quite a few upsets and only a few big nations are left with many many small outsiders, uh, which might be really really good for the women's game and hopefully will entice more nations to actually do some investment into the women's game, uh, because you see with just a little bit of organization you can have a lot of gain, you really really can. So what I'm going to do is I want to quickly run gr through this uh, group stage, group by group, give you my thoughts on that. Then we look forward to uh, the round of 16, uh, look at the matchups there, and then also look at how the favorites are, which you kind of see up there. I have a few uh, choice uh, matchups put up there, uh, kind of in the order of how favorite the teams currently are. Wearing France, of course, because uh, the only team that I do not have in my collection is, of course, Jamaica, who are playing France. Group A. Uh, for me, it was all about New Zealand in this group, and the Kiwis did not, or the Foreigns, I should say, did not uh, progress. I mean, Switzerland, yes, they got uh, the win over the Philippines, they got the, the two draws against uh, New Zealand and Norway. With two goals, you got five points, super efficient. Uh, Norway, to me, was, for the first two games, completely out of sorts. They deserved a loss to New Zealand. However, New Zealand were their own enemies by not having the finishing. And I think they were, uh, 
I I know that the technology says it was uh, offside, but they're equalized against the Philippines, which is the goal that would have seen them through. Uh, to me, I still cannot see quite how this was an offside, although the technology says so. I gotta believe it. But I really think that this broke them, uh, that they conceded against the Philippines. And that was one of the, the, the stories And you see kind of that New Zealand kind of failed there. What I find a little bit weird is, you know, the old rule to decide by goal difference. I think on head to head, New Zealand would have gone through. I know goal difference makes it exciting, but it was not exciting in th this time around because it was an either Switzerland or New Zealand in a, a straight knock out and i gotta say this is something a fifa should rethink honestly uh i think the head-to-head -head, although it creates that that was is the better solution today it did not feel fair to me that new zealand are out um and norway are moving on group b uh was actually a rather exciting one and uh, first of kudos to ireland who probably should have gotten more i think they would have deserved a draw against australia uh, they were in the game against Canada. Against Nigeria, they hang on to, 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 to a draw, but the big story has to be Nigeria here, who um, got a fought for a draw against the Olympic champions Canada. Then a brilliant game against Australia, where they hit him on the counter attack over and over again. Um, and then they sealed the deal with another draw against Ireland, although they threw away the group win, which then have, was handed to Australia. Yes, they have one loss. Uh, they did not look convincing. They were without Sam Kerr. Um, but the way that they disposed of Canada was kind of impressive. The Canadian team, yes, they are the Olympic champions, but that was already a little bit lucky, uh, one has to say. And so, yeah, um, I'm not so surprised overall that Canada out, although out of those four teams, Canada probably should have progressed. Group C was for the most time all about Japan or um, uh, Spain. It was all about Japan in in in, in the end with Japan. Uh, typically, Spain have the ball. Japan, it felt like get the ball four times, run on to goal and score. Really, 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 really weird. But yeah, Japan looked like the real deal. The way they took Spain, Spain apart. And it's funnily enough that all the models and so on still have Spain kind of high up. Should not be. Uh, credit also to Zambia for getting their first win. England kind of had a slow start into the tournament. Um, however, then it then were convincing against China. Uh, Lauren James looks like the real de uh, deal as well. And I think that England at the moment seemed like the most stable team. You know, they got the door, dirty wins against Haiti and Denmark, and then uh, really turned it up the next year against China. Group E, the United States did not win the group. The United States do not look good. They cannot convert chances. Already that they only won 3-0 against Vietnam was a disappointment. Uh, then they uh, only drew a 1-1 against the Netherlands. Yes, in the end, probably they should have won it, uh, but the Netherlands really dominated them in the first half. And then the Netherlands ran right on Vietnam, which the US couldn't do, and Portugal almost eliminated them and were the better team. A really, really, really weird one. Uh, in Group F, it should have been France and, and Brazil, but Jamaica, uh, like Italy, 1970, with one goal, they got five points and go through. They did not win the group like it Italy back then, but uh, pretty, pretty impressive record. Jamaica are rock solid on the back. They have not conceded. They even held the French who are a really, really good team, and they shot against Brazil, and they shot it against Panama. Free scoring team. I think uh, if they don't run into a defensively sound opponent, the French can uh, go really, really, really far, I would say. And Brazil, yeah, uh, it was a little bit lackluster, but I think the Jamaican um, uh, organization actually held them out, and so it's the end for Marta, which is a little bit sad. Uh, also has to have to say Jamaica were like, entered the tournament on ground funding. Weird. The big story in Group G is of course South Africa, who had leads against Sweden, had leads against Argentina, couldn't um, get it quite done in both cases, especially against Argentina. They, uh, they let go of a 2-0 lead uh, in a crazy game against Italy. And yes, Italy shot themselves in, in the foot hit. It also has to be clearly said, but in a crazy game, they win it 3-2 at the end. Italy could have also won that, but the Italian women are in a real soul-searching mode, it gotta be said as well. Sweden 
rather easy at the end. Yes, they had some trouble against South Africa, but then rather easy to dominate. They look like a really, really good team. A team that could give give this quite a run for the money. And then Group H, I still cannot believe that Germany are out. I really cannot believe it. But uh, this was the, the star of the group was Colombia for most of the time. Uh, Morocco, it's, you know... I have a little bit of feeling Germany, uh, uh, Morocco is a little bit like New Zealand against Norway, but they didn't finish level on points. So Morocco got the two wins. However, I don't know what to make of this final performance of Colombia. Also has to be said. The kicker is Germany had such a superior goal difference. If they just get the win against South Korea, a team they should beat every day, any day. They would have finished the group top. That's massive, massive, massive failure right there. And so we have the following bracket. We have Switzerland against Spain. Spain finished second. Are actually looking good now. That's really, really weird. Netherlands against South Africa. I think this will be much tighter than one would expect. I'm really looking forward to Japan against Norway. Uh, Japan, that will be great. Sweden against the United States. This is the big matchup. Uh, and that's the only big name match matchup. And I'm a little bit sorry that I'm high, high heading Sweden. Um, yes, the model has probably um, the United States as favorites, but overall, I think um, Sweden can do the United States, and they know the United States really, 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 really well. This is one of the biggest rivalries out there. Australia against Denmark, I think Stadium Australia will probably push the Aussies through. France against Morocco, that's a very intriguing one. Not only the coaches are an outpit, but also from a French international. But, you know, there has been a lot of history between France and Morocco. But I think Morocco basically hit the ceiling. I think France might be a step too far. England, Nigeria, similar story. Although I don't want to underestimate with the Africans, but England should do that. And then Colombia, Jamaica is really, can Jamaica hold tight against Colombia? If they can, they are moving on. I would think. However, I really would like to see another Razzle Dazzle performance by the Colombian women who are now the only South American hope. You see this bracket is made that by the rating, always the better team moves on. I mean, there are some really interesting quarterfinals in there. I mean, Spain against Netherlands, if that was suited to happen, but especially Japan against whoever comes out of Sweden, USA. I think this looks like a little bit of a foregone final, or maybe not, because, you know, we also see in the lower, lower bracket, England against Australia or France, looks also really, really enticing there. Uh, personally, although this bracket has not the US coming out on top, I don't think the US will win it. I'm not saying they will get eliminated by Sweden, but I don't think they, they, they will win it. I also, I'm not sure if Spain will make it out of the, uh, the, the upper bracket. The other Netherlands looked like a little bit better. Also, kind of an underrated team. Always look look for the underrated teams, and I think we will we are not done with surprises yet either. Also has to be said. Lastly, a little bit on the bracket. You know, we have the upper half is the New Zealand half. However, there are two games played in Australia, so there's a lot of travel, and I wonder couldn't we have uh, because they have to go to then go back to New New Zealand. I'm talking here. I think it's the Netherlands, South Africa, and the Sweden United States game. It doesn't seem quite fair. In, in a way to add this travel, which is something that I think will be an advantage for Japan and uh, Spain, respectively. Lastly, we have here the favorites. And again, this is due to the model that, you know, I, it I didn't really get, get adjusted. The United States have the highest rating, but they also have a really tough bracket going through Sweden, um, Japan and um, potentially Spain. So England at the moment are, fav uh, are favorites, but I can see this changing up and down all the time. So yeah, it was a slow build, but I really got into this Women's World Cup. I probably will do a video after the round of 16 as well. We'll like a quick recap there as well. Let me know what you thought about the games so far. Who do you think will win? I think I'm between England and France. But I don't want to discount Japan. And, you know, I... Let's see. In any case, give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!